Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where mishaps are part of the challenge. Today we're going to focus on a new type of ship. This one's going to be unique because it's the first one I've made anyways that actually has rail guns attached to it. With anything new I like to start out small, so in order to build this ship I'm going to actually use the small grid platform build. Now this thing isn't going to be that big, but I am going to put conveyors all the way through as my base. That way, when I connect the rail guns and potentially an assault cannon, the ammunition will flow all the way through the body of it. Hmm, maybe I should turn this a different color. Red on red is just too much red. How am I supposed to mount this? I think that'll work. Ah, I gotta get rid of the first one first if I'm gonna make them all black. So my plan is to actually mount two of these small rail guns on each side. I heard it does take a while for them to recharge, so I don't want to be caught off guard by only having two rail guns and them both be discharged before I can actually fire off another shot. It does take quite a bit of materials to build a railgun. You know, it takes a few superconductors, power cells, large tubes. It's quite a bit compared to most weapons. Alright, with those, now we just need a cockpit of some sort. I think a fighter cockpit will match the design of this ship. If I could just get it aligned here. My intent for this ship is to make it look like a scorpion. And so far, it doesn't look too bad. I'm not the greatest designer, but it seems to work all right. I removed the original tail and had to actually increase it because the assault cannon just will not fit or you'd be shooting into the back of the fighter cockpit and nobody wants that problem. Now with the assault cannon above the fighter cockpit, it gives us a wider range of shooting capability. So we can shoot straight forward now if we wanted to. To power this, I'm just using a, a ton of small batteries. They're lined all the way down on each side. And then maybe a gyro or two. I think for the size of this, since it doesn't weigh that much as a ship, I'm just going to use one gyro. That should be enough for us to maneuver. On the front here, we need something to power this sucker. So obviously, solar panels are way too big. You can't use a windmill because you can't attach it to a movable grid. So I'm going to throw on these small reactors. They only produce about 500 kilowatts each. But if I have three of them, I mean, that's one and a half megawatts, which should provide enough power to recharge them fairly quickly. But I don't think it's going to produce enough power to operate the ship and fire at the same time. It might, but we'll have to see. Worst case, in the future, I just add a couple more small reactors. There we go. Seems to be working all right. I'm going to add some other blocks on here, but they're really just for decoration. They don't serve a purpose except for giving it a little bit of style. One last piece here. And not looking too bad, honestly. Now I need to do something with the back of this thing, but we gotta trim in the sides, then cover the back. 
I probably won't go that excess on the steel blocks because I don't want this thing to be that heavy. As long as we kind of make it look all right cosmetically, it should be fine. Ah, I forgot ion drives. Unfortunately, I'm going to probably have to get rid of a couple of batteries just to put the ion drives. Otherwise, they're going to stick out and look all funny. I don't want them sitting too low because next time we land, I don't want to accidentally hit the ion drives. I have done that before. Since it is a light ship, I'm putting these ion drives towards the front because that's the heavier portioned area. And we'll probably just stick with four for now, just to see if it'll work or not. I forgot where I put that other one. Oh, there we go. I think that's where the other one is. Yeah, against this fighter cockpit. Yep, I'll re put one there. Okay. Just gotta get a couple more supplies and I can finish these things off and then move on to the next task. Uh, maybe I should put two on the back here. The two should be fine for propelling this. It might get kind of weird with steering because they're so far back. But I think if we keep it balanced enough, it should work. And since we're on the moon, I'm only going to put two thrusters going downward. I don't want to crash that hard. Once again, I'm just putting some decorative blocks. This is a black colored block, but it is using rusted block style. So you can see the, the rust and pigmentation change on it, which is kind of cool. It makes it look like it was old and dirty, like it actually came from the desert. Imagine a worn out black scorpion that's been traveling the desert for decades. That's pretty much what this is. I think I'm going to change these. They were too blocky, but if I put diagonal ones on there, it kind of gives it more of a style, I guess. It's coming together all right. Think I can get this done fairly quick. I just gotta finish this tail, I suppose. Oh, look at that. It kind of does look like a stinger from a scorpion for sure. Especially with the assault cannon moving back and forth and around. That's kind of cool. Couple of these, couple of those, one of those. I think that's all of them. Oh, one last one. We should be almost good to go to fly, but I just need to put on some backwards thrust. Otherwise, we're just going to keep going forward and forward unless we spin around. 
There we are, that's off the list. Yep, looks pretty much done. Just a few blocks here and there, and we should be good to go to test this thing. Usually I don't block the back of the fighter cockpit in case you want to connect an O2 generator or a medium cargo container, but since the purpose of this ship is just going to be for attacking things and running away, it's not needed. You can always deposit more ammunition through the fighter cockpit itself by entering the fighter cockpit. I think that's everything. All right, let's test this thing out. See if it'll actually go up in the air or not. What I do is I set quick access points for all my guns or anything else I want to control. For this purpose, I'm going to set up all these rail guns to shoot once. You could do multiple times, but I don't think it'll shoot multiple times because it takes so long to charge every shot. And I think that's about it. Hey, look at there. We can actually fly. I figured that four ion drives were enough. The moon only has 0.25 G of gravity, so it's not that strong against this small vessel. Not too bad, not too bad. Seems like we can move around a bit. I think I just need to load some ammunition. And... Adding two extra reverse thrusters, or rear thrusters, I suppose. Because otherwise we're just not going to move, I guess. We wouldn't want to slow Scorpion, because then anybody would be able to attack us right away. We want to be able to escape in the future if we can. There we go. When in doubt, add more power. It's fairly easy to maneuver, since it doesn't weigh very much. You can kind of spin it around pretty easy. It seems like if you had a target, you could easily line up with the target. But the rail guns themselves are supposed to shoot up to 2,000 meters, which is an impressive rate compared to most of the guns. I think the assault cannon on this thing is only 800 meters. Imagine an enemy or one of those stupid raiders running around and within 2,000 meters, you could take them out. They usually accompany the freighter ships, or if you get too close to certain planets, you'll find them. It would be very handy to use this thing, not as a defense, but as an offense. Just to practice it out, I'm going to build a target over here. so we don't accidentally shoot one of our other buildings. That's a basic target. Let's try this thing out. This thing always zooms out for some reason. It drives me crazy. Now, I'm not the greatest of shot, so if I miss this thing, don't laugh that hard. Well, you can if you want. Okay, first fire, let's go. Hmm. Yeah, I think I missed it. Second shot, definitely. Whoa, what the heck? Aw, oh, man. Ah, oh, I see what happened. With these things recharging, it sucked up all our power. So the ion drives just kind of collapsed. 
Dang, how long does this thing take to recharge? I only fired two shots. All right, there we go. I guess it's done. Now let's lift this thing back up. Try to add a landing gear. I don't even know what pieces flew off earlier. I'm going to have to remember that, though. And watch my power bar. After I shoot one, I guess I'm going to have to wait until it recharges before I can shoot a second one. Definitely going to consider adding more small reactors to this thing in the future. That way, it doesn't drain all the power immediately. It's got to figure out how much these things actually use to recharge. And... I think I might add a couple of ion drives too, just so maybe we can still get in the air or stay in the air longer and add a few batteries at that too. I'm hoping by doing these small modifications we won't crash as fast. Yeah, that now, now it kind of lights up the whole side of it though. I don't know if it looks cool or retro. Since most of the weight and power is at the front, I'm just going to add, I think, two to the front area somewhere. Hmm. Maybe I should add it next to these ones. Let's see, that would only be one. I don't necessarily want to do that, but I wonder if these were connected by a conveyor. I can't even remember now. Oh, nope. I guess I did miss a conveyor. Let me just throw one of these in here real quick. Cover it back up, maybe. Alright, now where can I put these ion drives? Oh, we don't really need this. It's just cosmetic. Mm, yep, that should do it. And one on the other side here. I know they're hanging down low, but at least they're not touching the ground. Worst case, if we crash again, I'll just have to rebuild them. It's kind of a waste of material. That's why I don't like putting them that low. Especially when you have to use platinum to build the thruster components. All right, let's see if we can hit this target again. Hmm, it seems lined up, but I think because we may be too close, I'm not hitting the target. Might have to make the target bigger afterwards. And the crosshair is right in the middle of it. Nope, goes right under it again. I think the target's just too small from this close of range. These guns are naturally focused back towards the center, but they have a very long angle depending on how far they can shoot. So since these ones can shoot up to 2,000 meters, yeah, we're going to have to back it up a bit just to hit the target. Mm. I think we just barely nicked the bottom of it, or we didn't hit it at all. I'm probably blasting holes in the side of the moon over there. Surprised there's not dust all over the place. Maybe I should try the assault cannon at some point, too. I don't remember how much ammo I put in this thing, but hopefully we don't run out. Nope. Still can't hit it. You can see how it, it they are so powerful it kind of kicks the ship sideways when you fire. I think maybe I should make this target a little bit bigger. Otherwise I'm going to have to get out some bifocals just to see it. The design is pretty cool. Almost looks like it has claws on the front. Everything still seems to be in working order. All right, let's do this target over here. I'm not going to bother changing colors. 
Of course, it does look like a cross. I, I don't know. That wasn't intentional, but I guess the two-toned color works. Okay, let's see if we can hit this target now. Otherwise, we're going to have to put some kind of ultrasonic tester rod here and fly because we're going to be as blind as bats if we can't see this thing. All right, let's try the assault cannon first. Maybe it's just the way I'm pointing my ship or something. Nope, I think we hit it. It really doesn't do any damage with an assault cannon. You probably have to shoot about four or five times just to break one steel block. Okay, maybe the rail guns. See if we can blast through it or not. Oh yeah, look at that, right through the target. I wouldn't want to be an enemy ship with this thing. I have to wait for it to recharge, of course. Do, 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 do. Test, test the left side. Boom! Right through it. Heck yeah, this thing is awesome. As long as we don't fire two shots consecutively, I think we're good. But maybe we can throw on some small reactors and prevent us from falling out of the sky. All right, not too bad, not too bad. Maybe I should back this thing up a bit. Probably just over that spinning burger over there. And try it again. Hopefully we can get closer to the center. As I said, this thing has a 2,000 meter range and the guns are kind of focused back towards the center at a 2,000 meter focus. So maybe this will be better. Oh yeah, it was closer to the center for sure. The only downside about these railguns is they require uranium. So it's fine if you've already harvested a lot of uranium and you're currently powering your ship with it. But if you haven't, you may have to wait until you get farther in the game in order to test them out. Man, just blew holes right through it. Oh, uh, I should have slowed down earlier. That's going to cost us. Looks like we lost a railgun, darn it. All right, so I'm not the most graceful flyer around here, but at least it has good controls. It's just the operator has malfunctions once in a while. Yeesh, look at that. We destroyed this thing. Of course, we did hit it with the ship, so I'm not sure if all the damage is from the railguns, or from the body of the ship. Let's just add this back on here. There we go. Now it looks better. It's back to normal again. I highly encourage you trying out this ship if you want. It's not too difficult to build. doesn't take too many resources. Well... As always, thanks for watching. I hope you leave your own tips and comments in the comments section. I appreciate it. Now let's go find a real target.